<clears throat> the fifth and final learning objective for session number 12 is capital market efficiency. We should look at what capital market efficiency is. We know that the values of stocks fluctuate uh, by the second and also uh, from year to year. And these values fluctuate because of changes in information. And essentially an efficient capital market is one where uh, prices change rapidly and adjust rapidly to changes in information. We may have one of three things happen to our stock price. When there's a big announcement like a new iPod or a new iPad coming out, you may see an efficient market reaction where the stock price goes directly up to a new level. Uh, you may have a, um, and we're going to call that the efficient market reaction where prices instantaneously adjust to fully reflect the new information. Uh, we, you might see a overreaction and correction, perhaps um, what Greenspan once called over uh, irrational exuberance. That's what it was, irrational exuberance. So we might have an overreaction and a correction back to that, what we would call efficient market level. Uh, or we may have a delayed reaction where the price will slowly adjust to that efficient market uh, level. In this case, uh, you see eight days elapse before the price completely is reflected. Uh, the new information is completely reflected in the price. So well-organized markets in general are efficient. Uh, investors are competitive, and the MPV of all investments is zero. Um, so that's an efficient capital market, a market where uh, stock prices and instrument prices uh, react quickly to changes in information. And you may have three types of uh, capital market efficiency, strong form efficiency, semi-strong, and weak form. Strong form efficiency is where all information of every kind is reflected in stock prices. Semi-strong is all public information is reflected. And weak form, current stock prices, just look at its own past prices. We hope you've enjoyed this very interesting session on um, lessons from capital market history. We've had uh, five learning objectives, how to calculate return on investment in percentage form and in total form. Uh, total return is equal to dividend yield plus capital gains yield. We've looked at the historical record as per the study of Ibbotson and Sinkfeld, and they've studied, they studied five primary uh, instruments and how those instruments have done over the past 80 plus years. Average returns, uh, what are average returns and how do you calculate them? You simply take the uh, instrument uh, return, historical returns and divide by n years. And what are the averages and which investments have done the best over the last 80 plus years? Uh, how these returns can vary was the topic of learning objective number four and how to calculate the variability, the variance and the standard deviation and what all that means. And finally, capital market efficiency. We talked about an efficient capital market, what it is, and our capital markets. Are they, efficient cap are they efficient capital markets or not? We hope you've really enjoyed this session on lessons from capital market history.